it's a weighted average of two elasticities, right? These, sum, these weights sum to one. It's a weighted average of the output demand elasticity and the substitution elasticity. This is the substitution effect. And this is the output effect, or scale effect. Okay. So the change in labor in response to a change in the wage is going to depend on how elastic is the demand for output and how substitutable are labor and capital. The more elastic output demand is, the bigger the reduction in labor because as you raise the price of labor, that raises output prices and that reduces output. More elastic output demand is, the more labor usage falls. The more substitutable labor and capital are, the more labor is going to decline because the more the firm's going to substitute from labor to capital. Those two are two of what are known as Marshall's Law. Alfred Marshall, very famous economist, from the 19th century, basically came up with these laws about labor demand and factor demand more generally. He said the more elastic is the demand for output, the more elastic will be the demand for labor. Pretty clear from this formula. The more elastic, more substitutable labor and capital are, the more labor is going to fall. There's a law that Marshall also talked about, which turned out not to quite be right, which was the bigger labor share or the bigger labor share the more elastic labor demand would be he was focused really on this term that said the bigger your share is the bigger the effect on on output because the bigger the effect you have on cost he didn't remember about this term though that i think hicks is the guy who came up with this kind of correction to marshall's law and said well wait a minute the substitution effect also depends on your share so holding the elasticity of substitution constant, a greater share for you means less ability to substitute. That's really the idea. That is the factor, the dominant factor has effectively less substitution than the less dominant factor if you compare the two factors of production. Okay? Which makes sense because you have to be holding output constant and therefore a 10% change in the little factor has to be offset by a much smaller change in the change of the big factor because they have to absolutely offset in terms of production. All right. Kind of has to do with that asymmetry symmetry thing we talked about when we talked about symmetry of the cost function. Any questions that people have? 